Hi, I'm Chris Bradshaw from Hexagon. During this video, now that our main PV heat exchanger model is complete, we'll look at adding the specific heat exchanger details. In this video, this will consist of the tube sheet itself. We'll look at the tube layout assistant to assist with determining the number of tubes and therefore the number of holes in the tube sheet. And we'll enter in the properties for the tube bundle itself. We'll also look at setting up the heat exchanger load cases. All right, so we have our main body of our heat exchanger. Let's now add the tube sheet and tube bundle. This is done from the details panel here. So as before in the previous examples that we ran, first thing we need to do is select where we want to attach the, in this case, tube sheet and tube bundle. So it will be attached to the inlet channel body flange. So I will select that and then I'll hit the tube sheet button from the details panel on the ribbon. This displays the tube sheet input window. Of course, tube sheets is quite a lot of information required, but the input is separated into various different tabs, which we'll go through in turn. Uh, starting with the first one, um, so let's pick the general information. So this will be an ASME tube sheet, and this will be a fixed type heat exchanger with no expansion joint. And for the tube sheet and shell junction stress reduction option, we'll leave as is, or we'll set to none. So if you remember in the previous video, what I said was you have to tell PV Lead which are the shell side elements and which are the tube side elements. This is done in this listing area here, and you need to check the box for the shell side elements. This is really where giving everything a name becomes very, very useful. See, we have all the element names if we didn't have the element names, we just have the you know, element one, element two with the node numbers. So giving things a name is very useful. Now we only have one shell side element, which is the main shell. So we just need to check that checkbox and only that checkbox. All right. So there's some various other information, service type, radiography type, uh, if we want to user define MAWP and so on, we can do that here. But for this example, I'll leave those as is, and I'm going to go to the Next page, the tube sheet properties. So I'll give this tube sheet a name. I'll just call this tube sheet one. And the location of the tube sheet is automatically calculated and by default is placed at the uh, far end of the selected element. So that is 171 millimeters, which is the 168 mil overall length of the flange plus the gasket distance. So that's okay, I don't need to change that, but of course you can change that if necessary. So what type of tube sheet do we have? Well, our tube sheet will be this one here, type B, a fixed tube sheet, uh, integral to the shell, uh, and, but extended as into the flange. When we select one of the types, which is tube sheet extended as flange, the checkbox required for that is automatically checked but we do need to specify the thickness of the extended portion. So that will be, in our case, 65 millimeters. And then the tube sheet itself will be 70 mil thick. So as soon as we change the thickness of the tube sheet, we get a warning message. Make sure you change the expanded depth of the tube on the tube data tab. That's okay, we've not gone to the tube data tab yet. So I can just click okay on that. Okay, for the rest of the input, I'm going to leave a zero. So for the corrosion allowance, uh, the depth of the welds and so on, I'm going to leave those as zero for this particular example. There's no shell band in this example. And for the moment, at least there are no axial loads for the tube bundle pullout force. Uh, if we need to remove the tube bundle for, for maintenance and so on, you can apply assign the force that will be applied here in this field down here. But for this example, I'm going to leave that out. Which takes me then to the next page, the tube sheet, the tube data page. So I need to specify the number of tubes uh, and the tube layout, which I can do here. I can specify the number of holes and so forth in the tube sheet, or alternatively, Pvli can assist me with this using the tube layout assistant, which is what I'm going to use here. So I'm going to hit tube layout assistant, and accessing the tube layout assistant does require me to save the file. So I'm just going to give this a name. I'll just call it heat exchanger one. 
and save it into a suitable location. Upon doing that, the Tube Layout Assistant will appear and I can specify some information here. So I just need to specify the basic information for the tubes, um, the tube boundary, the outer tube limit and so forth. Uh, so the outer tube limit will be 565mm. Um, that is based upon a 610mm OD and a 10mm thickness, so a 590mm ID. Uh, so let's go 565 for the outer tube limit. Uh, let's have 20mm diameter tubes uh, with a 30mm pitch. And just those three values is enough for PV Elite to start laying out the tubes. With the triangular layout, this gives us 301 tubes. Of course, you can try other types of layouts, a square layout, for example, but that only gives me 261 tubes. If you have nozzles, you need to provide clearance for the nozzles. You can add distance is here, so maybe I need to add in, let's say, 50 mil clearance for a nozzle on top. Again, that would reduce the space available and thus reduce the number of tubes and so on and so forth. But I'm going to set that nozzle clearance back to zero and I'm going to stick with my 301 tubes with the triangular pattern. If you have multiple passes, you can also add partitions up in the top section here. But again, for this example, I'm going to have zero partitions just a single pass and I'm going to leave as so. So that's all I need to do. So I'm just going to save the results here of this tube layout and I'll close the tube layout assistant. And then within back in PV Elite, in the tube sheet input, I can just hit the import layout results and that will fill in the majority of the information required on here. Which just leads me to specify a few more pieces of information. So a three mil wall thickness. Let's have a one mil corrosion allowance. The expanded portion of the tube, 40 millimeters, and the straight tube length. Well, I'm going to measure that between the inner faces rather than the outer faces. And the distance between the inner faces, the straight tube length, is the same as the length of our main shell, which was 2.87 meters. And that's it for the basic tube data. Let's specify the weld data for the tube to tube sheet weld. Uh, let's have a three mil size weld. And let's have a full strength weld. And let's change the allowable joint load method to ASME UW20, which is more appropriate for welded joint. And because this is a fixed tube sheet, we need to specify the maximum distance from the tube sheet to the first support, and then the maximum distance between two supports. So I'm going to say that is 700 mil here, and 500 mil between two supports. That's everything for this page. Next we have the expansion joint page, but we don't have a joint, so I can go next to the load cases page. Most of this is imported and pulled in from the basic data that we've already entered. But there may be some information that we need to specify here. So for the max operating pressure, I'm going to put that as 0 0.7. Temperatures are mostly OK. I'm just going to adjust the mean metal temperature along the length to 90 degrees for the shell and 140 degrees for the tubes. And then I'm going to change the material for the tubes. So default material SA214. I'm going to change this to a material SB165, which has a copper content, so it's better for heat transfer uh, properties. So I need to choose this instance, of course, because this is the sub five inch OD. So select the correct instance as SB6. At 165 and then that's for our first load case you can have up to eight different load cases for this example again just let's just have one load case and then finally I'm going to click up here for the reports options for this load case and for each of the load cases up to eight load cases that you process PVLE will run 
these eight different load cases and it will run each of them in the corroded and the uncorroded condition. So we have 16 different load cases evaluated, different com combinations of design and operating temperatures and pressures and shell side and tube side pressures. By default, PVLE will only provide the detailed results for the this one here, D3, which is the shell side maximum pressure, tube side maximum pressure for the uncorroded case. Typically, that's the worst scenario. You can view the detailed results for any of the other cases by checking the box. Uh, of course, PVLE will run and give you a summary of all of these, um, and it's advised not to check all of them, otherwise you'll get 16 very, very detailed load case reports for each of your eight load cases which you run. So your report will be enormous. So I'm just going to leave the one checked, the uncorroded case. And for the tube sheet input, that's everything. I'm just now going to click OK. And there we see the tube sheets have been inserted, connected to the body flanges. And if I switch to a transparent view, I can also see the tubes in the tube bundle. You could also, instead of going transparent, you can also add a cutting plane with this button here. So we can see inside the main shell. To see the tube bundle, like so. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. But remember, if you do have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Hexagon. Thanks for watching.